got another set of questions for the bonding and structure topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first okay so make a start so bromine atom has 35 electrons so we have this electron configuration here and with the 4s and the 3d you could you could write them the other way around if you wanted to moving on to the equation so they've told us phosphorus formula is p4 so we'll need to use that in the equation so we'll balance the pbr3 first so we've got four p's on the left so we'll need a four in front of the pbr3 that's given us 12 bromines so we need a six in front of br2 so moving on to part b we've got to establish the type of bonding here from the uh, electrical conductivities so in the solid state it's poor but in the liquid state it's good so it's obviously ionic so the lattice is a giant ionic lattice so what's the explanation for the different conductivities it's all down to the ability of ions to move so in the solid state the ions can't move so it has this poor electrical conductivity whereas in the liquid state the ions can move so it's not to do with electrons it's ions So moving on to the next question, we've got to explain the melting point and the electrical conductivity for calcium and bromine and obviously link it all to structure and bonding. So like I said at the start of the playlist, got to be really careful with your word in here. You must call the particles by the correct names. So we'll start with calcium. So calcium's got a giant metallic lattice structure. So it's got this high melting point because there's a very strong electrostatic attraction in the lattice between the calcium 2 plus ions and the delocalized electrons. Now moving on to its good electrical conductivity. So what's that down to? It's because these delocalized electrons can move. So moving on to bromine now. So you'll notice it's got a much, much lower melting point than calcium. So what's that down to? Well, bromine has a simple covalent or a simple molecular structure. And to melt the structure, you've got to break the weak induced dipole forces between the Br2 molecules. And finally, why is bromine a poor electrical conductor? It's because it doesn't have any mobile charge carriers. So it doesn't have any mobile ions, it doesn't have any mobile electrons. So just before I move off this question, you can see I've highlighted some key um, words there or terms. So remember, it's really important you call things by the correct name. So in calcium, in any metal, you've got metal ions. So in the case of calcium, it's the 2 plus ion. And you've also got delocalized electrons. In the case of a simple covalent or a simple molecular structure, you've got molecules attracting each other. In this case, with induced dipole forces, or you could have also said London forces. Sorry, I didn't explain that uh, in the answer. And obviously another important thing to mention is the relative strength of the interactions. So obviously in a metal, you've got this high melting point. So that's telling you that this metallic bonding is strong. Whereas this, these intermolecular forces in bromine are obviously weak and give you those totally different melting points. Moving on to part B, so the dot and cross diagram. So calcium ion, full out the shell, crosses i always use crosses for my metal so two plus charge there you can have an empty outer shell there if you want but i tend to put the this sort of neck shell in as being full so that's the calcium ion and because it's cabr2 we need two br minus ions so because i've gone for crosses for the calcium i'm using these open circles for the electrons for the bromine bromine's in group seven so we need seven valence electrons for the bromine and obviously there's the electron that the calcium's provided. One minus charge for your bromine. Moving on to the next part. So we've got to explain the difference in reactivity of these two metals with bromine. So it's all down to the relative positions in group two. Barium's lower down in the group. So it's going to have a bigger atomic radius. It's going to have more shielding. It's going to have lower first and second ionization energies. So it's going to have a weaker nuclear attraction for its valence electrons so it can lose two electrons much more easily than the calcium can
So moving on to the equation, you can see I've got the unbalanced version here. The question's kind of testing you on your knowledge of um, formulae. So aluminium hydroxide's formula wasn't given. It's going to be ALOH3 because of the charges, Al3+, plus, but OH is just 1 minus. So we'll start balancing it now. So we've got two aluminiums on the left, so we're going to need two in front of the ALOH3 times. Three seleniums on the left, so three in front of there. And then if we count up, let's go for the oxygens. It's got three O's there times two, so six O's on the right. So we'll put a six in front of the H2O. Moving on to the next part, so why have I written FON? It's because if you have a hydrogen directly bonded to an F, an O or an N, you have hydrogen bonding between the molecules and they are typically stronger than other intermolecular forces. So between water molecules or H2O molecules, you're going to have hydrogen bonds because you've got an H directly bonded to an O. So that raises its boiling point to 100 degrees C. H2SE, well, SE is not one of those three. So this is going to be, it's a polar molecule. So it's got permanent dipole, dipole interactions between its molecules, but they're not as strong as the hydrogen bonds. And that's reflected in the lower boiling point. And moving on to the final question. I'm going to start with the explanation and then explain the angle from that. So with any shapes of molecules question, you should always talk about the number of electron regions in the valence shell. So we've got one, two, this counts as one region, a double bond. So one, two, three electron regions in the valence shell. Next thing we need to do is quantify the types of electron regions. So we've got one lone pair and two bonding regions. Next thing we need to do is talk about repulsion. So it's either equal or not. Well, it's not going to be equal because you've got a lone pair in there, which repels more than these bonding regions. So in terms of the angle, well, if we've got three electron regions, our starting angle is 120 degrees. But with one lone pair, we would take two and a half degrees off that. So our bond angle is going to be 117.5 degrees.